Welcome to section 4.5. The last video was a little bit long, and so I'm going to make it up to you by making this one a little bit short. In addition, I think I may have referred to 4.1 in the last section. If I did, what I meant was 4.2 part 1, since we actually didn't do 4.1 formally. Let's start with a review. And then today we're just going to do a little bit more of undetermined coefficients, but nothing, nothing really new in terms of content. So circle the DEs that you could use UC on. Um, first one, remember, there's two requirements. One, constant coefficients. And two, the driving function, the f of t, has to be a polynomial, sine, cosine, and exponential, or a product of those. So this one's good. Next one's no good because of this t here. Can't have uh, non-constant coefficients, so that's a no. This one's good because remember we can when we divide by e to the 2t, that's the same as multiplying by e to the negative 2t. So that's a product of a sine, cosine, and an exponential. The next one is uh, looking good. Next one, no, because of the log. And the last one looks good to me. Products of polynomials and sine, cosine. Okay, and the other piece of review is the structure of the general solution to a non-homogeneous. The general solution is going to have the form yp, where yp is any particular solution to the non-homogeneous, plus yc, where yc is the general solution to the associated homogeneous. So in this problem, we're given yp. Uh, first, we need to solve for yc, and we want to solve the associated homogeneous. I'm going to write it in the correct format. Everything on one side, y double prime minus 2y prime plus y equals 0. When I write it in that format, it's easy to write down the characteristic equation. r squared minus 2r plus 1 is 0. And that gives me r minus 1 quantity squared is 0. So I've got a repeat root. And my yc is c1. The repeat root is 1. So 1 and 1, e to the t plus c2 t e to the t. So my general solution is the given yp over here, t squared e to the t plus the yc I just found, c1 e to the t plus c2 t e to the t. Okay, so I misspoke when I said there's no new um, content today. There is a little bit of new content, and that is the second superposition theorem, the one for non-homogeneous differential equations. We saw the one for homogeneous differential equations was actually very simple, and you can go back to your lecture um, 4.2 part 1 lecture notes and read that, but it was very straightforward. This one's a little um, less straightforward. Uh, we have, um, suppose y1 is a solution of this differential equation, and the left side is equal to f1, y2 is a solution of the left side is the exact same. The only thing changes is the driving function. Instead of f1, it's equal to f2. Then y1 plus y2, linear combinations of that, are not necessarily going to be a solution of um, f1 plus f2. You have to be a little bit more careful. This is the form c1y1 plus c2y2 is a solution of this non-homogeneous differential equation c1f1 plus c2f2. So it's probably as clear as mud right now, um, but it's really not that bad. What you just need to do is go through, figure out what, well, you, you'll be given y1 and y2, just figure out what f1 and f2 are and c1 and c2, and then put it all together. So here's an example from your homework. We're given y1 and y2, and the differential equations we're given are um, y double prime minus y prime plus y equals sine t. So our f1 in this theorem, f1 is sine t. And then the second differential equation is uh, the same left-hand side, but now it's equal to e to the 2t. So that's our f2. 
All right, and we want a solution to same left-hand side equal to two sine t plus three e to the two t. So in order to determine c1 and c2 in this case, we need to just look at this and say, okay, this is two f1 plus three f2, right? And so by the theorem, my general solution is gonna be, we want y equal to um, c1 y1 plus c2 y2, 2 y1 plus 3 y2, because my c1 is 2 and my c2 is 3. So I just use those same coefficients, but now in front of the y1 and the y2. So that's not bad. y1 is cos, so 2 cos t plus y2 is a third e to the 2t. So if I multiply by 3, you just get e to the 2t. So there's a solution of the given differential equation. It's not the general solution. It's a particular solution. I misspoke. It's not general. If it were general, it would have a c1 and a c2 in it. Not to be confused with this c1 and c2. All right, so next one, um, this is negative 4f1 plus 18f2. So now my c1 is negative 4, my c2 is 18. So I want for my solution negative 4y1 plus 18y2. So negative 4y1 is negative 4 cos t. And 18y2, 18 times a third is 6, so plus 6 e to the 2t. So if you're patient and work out c1 and c2, f1 and f2, it's not that bad. Okay, so now, now we are going to do review. We're going to practice just using the table to write down the trial yps, okay, and then and then we're going to take it up a step. We're going to say, okay, if we know YC, we're going to use the table to write down YP and then check for repeats. All right, so this is um, just using the table. Suppose that our F of T, we have a differential equation, and the F of T part is T cubed minus T. Our trial YP would be a generic cubic polynomial, A T cubed plus B T squared plus C T plus D. Can't check for repeats because I have no idea what Y C is. I don't even know what the differential equation is. So this is just very basic, okay? And you should actually pause the video, make sure you can write down the trial Y P's for all of these functions. Okay, hopefully you did that. If F of T is cos 2 T, our trial Y P would be A cos 2 T plus b sine 2t. We need both terms there, the sine and the cosine. Okay, for the next one, I have a linear polynomial times cosine t. So my trial yp is going to be a linear a t plus b cos t, and then plus another linear c t plus d times sine t. So in the table, um, in the table, let me see if I can find my table so I can just um, remind you the beta there. So let me, let me just go back. Where's our table? Here it is. Um, the beta in our case is one. So, so you're not gonna ever have a beta in your answer or an alpha. You're gonna fill those in for the particular problem. So let me go back to my lecture notes here. In this case, our beta is one. So I'm not writing cosine beta t sine beta t. I'm writing cos t sine t. If this had been five t cosine seven t, 
I would have AT plus B cosine 7T and then CT plus D sine 7T. And it has to be in this format. Remember, you can't write it factored as um, AT plus B and then times C cos T plus D sine T. It's got to be in the format I'm giving you here. Okay, next one. Next one is a, a combination of F1 and F2. So we're going to use the table to find a YP1 and use the table to find a YP2. So our YP1 would be A cos 2T plus B sine 2T. And then using the table on sine T, we'd need, you have to start with new letters. You can't use the old letters. So C, C uh, sine T, well, cosine T, cosine T plus D sine T. It doesn't matter whether you put the sine or the cosine first. You just need one of each. So this is the YP1, and this would be the YP2. Okay, the next one is also a sum of an F1 and an F2. So my trial YP is going to have the form YP1 plus YP2. YP1 is going to be a generic quadratic. AT squared plus BT plus C. And then now YP2 is going to be a constant times e to the 5t. So I can't use a again. I have to go to d, e to the 5t. So I have a yp1 and a yp2. I'm just making that distinction because when we get to the next part where we check for repeats, if there's an offending guy, if there's a repeat in y1, we're only going to multiply yp1 by t, not yp2. So it's, it's important to keep track of um, where these come from. The next one, again, it's a YP1 plus a YP2. The first one's going to be a generic uh, linear polynomial, AT, square, AT plus B times E to the negative T. That's our YP1. And our YP2 is going to be uh, a cosine plus a sine. So ABC cos T plus D sine T. Again, it doesn't matter whether you write C sine T plus D cosine T or the way I did it. Just as long as you have a cosine there and a sine. This is our YP2. YP2. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to take it a step further. Um, I'm giving us F, but I'm also giving us YC so we can check for repeats. And I've gone through, just to save time, I've gone through in each case and written down the trial YP that corresponds to the given F. So for example, if I have e to the negative t, my trial YP is going to be a constant times e to the negative t. I look for repeats. So I see there's no repeat with e to the 3t, but there is a repeat here with c2 e to the negative t. So I need to multiply by t. Smallest power that will kill off any repeats. A t e to the negative t. Okay, next one, for f of t equal t squared, I have a quadratic, generic quadratic um, polynomial here, and I look for repeats against my yc, and I see a repeat because there's a constant here, and then there's a constant here. So I multiply, and I have to multiply the whole thing because it's one yp. I can't just multiply the c by t. I'm going to multiply the whole thing by t. I get at cubed plus bt squared plus ct. Now there are no repeats. Okay, next one is the sum of three yps because I have an f1 polynomial, F2, an exponential, and an F3, sine cosine. So I wrote down my YP1. That's the generic linear. Then a YP2 is here. And a YP3 is here. And I look for offending terms. Um, 
I'm completely safe on YP2 and YP3, but in YP1, I see a duplicate. There's a constant and there's a constant. So I'm going to multiply YP1 by T and only YP1. YP2 and YP3 were fine. So all of YP1 gets multiplied by T. My final YP is AT squared plus BT. Then just copy everything else down. CE to the negative T, D cos T plus E sine T. Okay, next one, this is just one F in your table. This is a polynomial times an exponential times a cosine. So we're going to get a linear polynomial times the same exponential, e to the 3t, and then I'm going to have a cosine 2t, and then I need to add on the same type of function with a sine 2t. And then I look for repeats, and there are none because that e to the 3t is saving me when I distribute, so I won't get any just straight up constants time, constant times cosine 2t or a constant times sine 2t. So this is going to be the same. I don't have to do anything. And for this last guy, again, this is one function from your table. This is just an F1 or an F. It's a quadratic times a cos. So I have a generic quadratic cos 2t and a generic quadratic sine 2t. I look for repeats. I see I have repeats because I'm going to have a constant times 2t, constant times, what did I say? A constant times cosine 2t, and then I'll have a, a repeat here. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing, multiply, because it's just one, this is one yp, multiply by t. Okay, and so in your homework, they have the t out here, but that's kind of silly because the first thing you're going to do when you actually solve a problem is distribute it. So I like to distribute at cubed plus bt squared plus ct cos 2t and then dt cubed plus et squared plus ft sine 2t. Okay. So hopefully that helps clear things up if you still had any lingering questions about using your table from last time. So, so the last thing that I'm going to do today is just one single easy problem. And then you have one fairly straightforward problem to do when you upload your lecture notes. So let's find a general solution to this non-homogeneous differential equation. So step one, we want to solve the associated homogeneous y double prime minus y equals zero. So the characteristic equation is r squared minus 1 is 0. So my roots are plus or minus 1. So my yc is c1 e to the t plus c2 e to the negative t. Step 2, my trial yp is, okay, this is a, uh, linear polynomial, so I want a generic linear polynomial, a, t, plus b. There are no repeats. So I can go ahead and find y, p, prime, which is a, and y, p, double prime, which is zero. Step three, I plug in. So I'm going to plug in to this differential equation up here at the top. y double prime is 0, and I want to subtract y. y is at plus b. And I set that equal to negative 11t plus 1. Okay, so that's negative at minus b is negative 11t plus 1. So I equate coefficients. Negative a is negative 11, so a is 11. And negative b is positive 1, so b is negative 1. 
So my general solution is yp, which is 11t minus 1, that's my yp, and then I add on, you don't need parentheses there, I just put them there, but you don't need them. I add on my general solution, which is c1 e to the t plus c2 e to the negative t. And that second part is my yc. And that's it. As promised, hopefully this was shorter and easier for you to get through. That's the end of this section.